On this episode of Carnage, we're going to take the engine out of Turbo Taxi and see what went wrong. Taxi's back! So this is Turbo Taxi. For those of you that are unfamiliar, God, there's so much smoke. For those of you that are unfamiliar, this was a genuine Melbourne taxi that we bought with 577,000 Ks on the clock. It has over 600,000 on it right now. And uh, yeah, we've done a few motors in this over the last five years, all right? So I think it's had four or five motors, a couple of different gearboxes, a couple different diffs, uh, never broke a diff but it did snap an axle. Um, it is basically like grandpa's axe, it's got, you know, it's got a different engine, different gearbox, different diff, different tail shaft, but it's a genuine Melbourne taxi, that's right. Yeah, so we've been trying to get the best we can out of the, uh, the factory Barra green top, you know, the LPG special engine and uh, they've got better rods in them and that sort of thing and we've been trying to run a 10 running on LPG that's liquefied petroleum gas okay so not petrol we are running on propane for you international viewers all right barbecue gas yes and we've been trying to run 10s on barbecue gas for five years our best time is 11-0 and running that 11-0 it popped an engine on the line then we replaced that engine, took it up to Sydney, melted a piston. Then we replaced that engine, which is that engine, and got it up to 620 rear wheel horsepower on the dyno. It was great, everything was great. And even before we got to the track, piston. Well, that's what we think. So what we're gonna do now is pull the engine out and pull the head off, pull it down, see what went wrong. But we're not doing this just for fun. We've sent the new engine block off to Dandy Engines. It's getting machined right now. We're putting an engine together. Turbo Taxi's going back together. We're running 10s this year. That's right. Yeah. So before we tear it down, let's talk about the combination. It is a 2010 FG Falcon, right? So genuine taxi, factory LPG, as you can see by the green top. Of course, people change engines and that sort of thing, but that is a genuine green top engine. Uh, standard rods, standard pistons, crank, everything. Uh, we've upgraded the turbo. It has a GCG 3584 Garrett turbo on it, a 50 mil turbo smart wastegate, turbo smart blow off valve, of course, Plasman intercooler, uh, Plasman airbox, 12 LPG injectors controlled by a Haltech 2500 ECU. It's got a spark booster from Herod Motorsport to make sure that the spark is nice and strong. Uh, it has a BTR four speed in it, all right? So this isn't a six speed car. All the taxis were four speeds. So we've stuck with the four speed. Andrew at Preston's Automatics has strengthened, strengthened it up. He builds a really tough BTR, so uh, we've gone with that. It has a tail shaft modified by GJ Drive Lines. It has an XR8 diff with you know, so instead of the factory taxi diff, we've gone to a 345 XR8 diff. Uh, we've upgraded axles, not factory axles. It's got even stronger than XR8 axles in it. So pretty tough combo. Couple workshops I need to point out. Uh, MPW, without them, this car wouldn't have existed because I basically built it on their spare hoist in their workshop five years ago all right so big shout out to those guys and then of course jason at tunnel vision turbocharging jason was responsible for the whole the tuning and the basic setup of the 12 injectors and the computer and all that sort of stuff so big shout out to both those guys um wow it has been a long journey getting to this point i've got to say but we are sick of breaking standard components we're trying to run 25 pounds of boost on a standard bottom end and the pistons just aren't copying it anymore. So we've decided to go forge pistons, H-beam rods, good gear, and we're gonna 
build up an engine with dandy engines, put in a taxi, and go out there and run tens. So I think we need to start pulling the bonnet off. Let's do that. Should probably turn off the gas right about now. Okay, the gas is off. All right. A starter motor. Wow. Alrighty. So, now that we've got most of the stuff disconnected up top, I'll say most because there's always something, uh, it's time to undo the torque converter bolts, which can be only accessed through the starter motor hole on the FG Falcon, because it's rear sump. Yeah, that's the way it's got to be done, which is a pain in the butt. Thankfully, we've got the starter out. So now it's just a matter of uh, getting up there with our tools and working away in this bloody hole. And turn the engine over till we can find the bolts. My life sucks.
Hey, Bolt. Done. I got a big bar. So we're just attaching our engine lifting bracket here. We've had to move the fuel rail because this doesn't work with our LPG fuel rail, mainly because, yeah, reasons. Um, there's an extra fitting there that isn't on the standard setup. So we've had to, um, you know, remove it for service inside the car, but we need it to lift the engine out. just reaching up here undoing the gas lines which are actually pretty simple we've just got a couple of retaining pins like these so yeah get to slip the pins out and then the fitting just slips out of the converter yeah a little bit fiddly but I think we have everything undone now. We will find out one way or the other. Let's lift this bitch out of here. There we have it, the barra, the bloody big fish. All right, well, I guess we should start pulling it down and find out what went wrong.
So, in addition to finding out what went wrong with this engine, uh, we need to use this head on our new engine. Well, as long as there's nothing wrong with the head, maybe it's torched the head. We won't know until we pull it off. So, manifolds have to come off, head has to come off, and that should give us a fair idea of uh, what went wrong inside. Well, let's get to that. So we get a lot of questions about the LPG system in the taxi. Uh, a lot of people want to replicate it. They all want to run fast on gas. And usually what I say to them, don't. I mean, obviously fuel's really expensive right now, so a lot of people are starting to look back at gas as an option. But, well, you look at it this way. 10 years ago, people, well, the government was paying people to put LPG systems on their cars, 10 years ago. Now they're not. Now they're pulling LPG out of service stations. I mean, they are trying to phase out LPG. You know, this is how st stupid it all is, you know. One minute they're paying people to convert, next minute they're pulling the LPG out. So, but, so the system uses 12 injectors, we've got sensors and all sorts of stuff as well. 12 injectors, you know, at 200 bucks a pop, plus a Howtech computer, what's that, three grand. You know, plus all the other stuff we need to run this thing. It's got multiple converters, lines, all that stuff. The LPG system and computer, there's like $12,000 right there. So everyone thinks, oh, it's cheap. It ain't cheap. Yeah, it is definitely not cheap. But, you know, we're doing it just basically to see if we could. So far, <laughs> that would be a no. However, we are that close that we know it's going to happen. Just a matter of us getting it right. It is different though. There's six of the injectors right there. So one of the main problems with uh, doing a high horsepower LPG setup is the injectors just can't flow enough. The highest power injector anyone makes is the Key and Brown and they do 100 horsepower per injector. So even if you got, you know, having best flow out of them, everything, you got, you're going to make 600 horsepower at the most at the crank, all right? We need more than that. Um, plus, those injectors are super unreliable. We have killed at least a dozen, you know, like, and at $200 a pop, it adds up. Um, so we've gone to these Kian Purples, they're a, a different style of injector, they're 85 horsepower per injector um, and a lot more reliable than the Kian Browns. The Browns, yeah, I wouldn't recommend them to anyone, but these Purples seem to work really well. This is our secondary bank here, so they just go in, so inject through these lines into the runner and then obviously we've got our our main injectors, our main six, run into the normal ports of a, this is an FG turbo petrol manifold. So your main six run there and your secondary six to supply extra fuel at boost. And that's what happens. They come in at a certain boost level. I can't remember what that boost level is. But when you come in at that extra boost level, boom, these extra six come on and gives us, you know, enough fuel for the top end of the boost range. Uh, we ran 11.5 on one set of injectors, but that was kind of, the, they were maxed out. And that was the key in Browns. So one set of injectors, we got 11.5s. But now, you know, to go into the 10s, we need two sets and we need it to be reliable. You know, every time you kill an injector, you got a chance of killing the motor. So we need it to be reliable. So yeah. I hope that explains a little bit about the gas system on this thing. There are so many more challenges. Some of them I'm not allowed to talk about. Jason, uh, Jason has basically said some stuff we're not allowed to talk about because he's spent 20 years working on this stuff and developing it and he's not just going to give away all these secrets. So that's part of it. But also, you know, like I say to people, it is so expensive and to do it right and 
you know what we've been through five engines already and that's for no other reason that then you know lpg is not really the fuel to be doing this with if it was the 85 we'd done it once and it'd be in the tens it would have been in the tens in the first six to eight months but lpg she's a different kettle of fish however it is cheap and like i said if you set it up to run mid 11s sure you can do that and it will be reliable it went we had an engine last for well over 12 months at 11.5 and um, that combination drove thousands of k's like it drove we've been to eight different drag strips raced at eight different drag strips driven to every one of them it has been on a car trailer once or twice but we've been to eight drag strips that we have driven to and that's as far away as 1800 k's to queensland it's been to adelaide you know it's been to all the eight small local tracks you know so we've run at a lot of tracks done a lot of passes and learnt a lot over that time but yeah we know what's reliable and what isn't and what we know is uh the standard pistons just can't cop it at 25 pounds of boost on lpg that's just the sad fact of the matter so now we're going forgies now we're h beam rods the thing should at least have some sort of safety margin and should go tens and as soon as it runs tens on lpg we're gonna piss all this crap off and go on at e85 because yeah that's the way to go So we've removed the hot and cold sides. Uh, now it's for basically everything else. And when I mean everything else, I mean kind of everything else because to pull the head off, you've got to pull the front off, which means you kind of got to pull a sump off as well. So it's going to be balance of front, sump, rocket cover, head. It's a thing. It's definitely going to be a thing. So I reckon that's enough for today. It's beer clock. Let's go home. We'll look at this tomorrow. So here we are next day and we're gonna start breaking down our barra, see what went wrong with it. Uh, we're gonna start by removing the balancer. So it always helps to have the correct balancer removal tool. So get that on there. our coils out now these are ones that were sent to us from uh, drifter performance are they better i don't know i know that zane and the crew down there at max recommend using genuine ford coils always so all i know is that uh yeah we've got a voltage booster on our taxi which um basically yeah means regardless of what coil we use. It's got enough spark. can just smell the LPG. It's definitely been uh, feeding some uh, unburnt LPG into the oil system and you can just see the oil is severely de degraded. Probably hasn't done the cam any favours, or the cams. 
Yeah. I mean, we've been starting this up and running it to drive it in and out of the workshop over and over and over again. Yeah. Ugh, it just reeks. Yuck. Ugh. I guess now is as good a time as any to uh, drop the oil. Time for the shifter. Man, I'm not going to get screwed. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow, that's quality. My milkshakes bring all the boys to the yard. They're like, they're better than yours. Oh my God. That's terrible. And so is my dancing. Eyes, children. <laughs> the moment of truth. Not looking, not looking. Okay, so I can't see any visible damage to the uh, top of the pistons. So it hasn't burnt through from the top like it did on the, uh, the last motor. So yeah, I th I'm pretty confident it'll be a broken ring land on something. Probably down the back here, which it always seems to be five and six, generally. Might pull the, turn it upside down, pull the sump off, which we'll have to do anyway if we're pulling rods and pistons out. We'll turn it upside down, pull the sump, and see if we can see anything from underneath. Yeah. So, just as with the top, I can't tell looking from underneath where, which one is the problem or if there's multiple problems. Typically it's five or six, sometimes it's four. Generally it's not towards the front, so I'll start at the back, work my way forward, and we'll start popping some rods and pistons out. See where it went all wrong.
So yeah, a little bit of wear on the bearing, but uh, who knows how old the bearings are. I mean, let's face it, this would have been a stock bottom end. So who knows how old it was. Oh yeah, we get a winner. How's that? We've got broken rings. Certainly smashed the ring lands out of it. But uh, yeah. It's not supposed to look like this. It's not as bad as our old friend, but uh, yeah, that's not great. Okay. So there we have it. We have found the problem. Broken ring lands as suspected. And that's what happens when you push unknown stuff well beyond its limits. I mean, remember, this is an unknown quantity. It is a stock bottom and green top. We pushed it hard. And uh, yeah, things have not gone well. I did actually find there was a dodgy connector in the loom for that cylinder, so uh, we will need to repair that. And that is on the list of things to do. But moving forward, we're building a another barra. You know, rods, pistons, it's all at dandy engines right now, getting machined. We'll show you that in the next episode of Carnage. But uh, yeah, we've gone as far with this as uh, we're going to go. So it will be added to our pile of barra parts and we'll add our broken piston to our collection of broken pistons. Yeah. But anyway. All right. We're going to move forward, build up a new barra, and you're going to see all that in a future episode of Carnage.